وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رحمة يا رحم الرحيمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقضة من لساني يفقه قولي إن شاء الله our today's topic is three more consonants جيم حا and خا you can write down as the topic of the day That will be number one. Number two, I'm writing the numbers in Arabic. <laughs> so you get familiar and very soon you are going to learn Arabic numbers. Okay. Can you please move a little bit back? The, the, the board, divider? Board, this board, divider, yes. The second is good. Symbol spoon. It is a circular shape, round shape. This is known as spoon. And third thing will be function, and then automatically you will get three letters, right? So. If I remove this nukta from jim and the nukta from kha, all three letters, the basic skeleton is same. If you put the nukta in the middle, it becomes jim. If you do not put any nukta at all, you leave it empty. It is another letter ha. And if you put one nukta on the top, it is kha. Now. First of all, put all these three letters into your connecting letters basket. All these three letters are connectors. It also means that these three letters have all four shapes. So everyone has the list of connecting non-connecting letters. Okay. So it's very important that you put them into connecting letters list. Independent gym is like that. And writing of gym is also very simple. But those who are learning Arabic very first time and learning writing Arabic, I am again writing it, so pay attention. What to do first? This is very basic in Arabic letters that you imagine a line. Always, whenever you write a letter, draw a line. It's your imagination that is the center. Then the letters go above the line, in the center of the line or below the line. So for writing a jim, you will make a hook in the beginning, like that. Then you will draw a straight line, like that. And both of them are above the line. Then you will swing down from here, and we, you go below the line, and you will complete it up to here, and then put one nukta in the middle. All other two letters, ha and kha, you will make the same shape. No difference. So, this is about the four shapes of jim. The same four shapes will be for ha. So, this is independent ha. This is beginning, initial ha. This is medial ha. What we are doing in medial ha, we are just uh, adding a connecting segment in the beginning shape and this is a connecting segment for the final ha and you will make like that so the same shape you are getting for ha this is ha oh actually I put the nukta by mistake so this is 
Now if I start make, putting the nukta, it will become kha. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Yes. Some, sometimes the way jim is written, uh -huh. it has a different form. Yes, we are, go we are coming okay. there. We are okay. coming there. Okay, since we are uh, talking about writing of the letters, so let me initiate another discussion that he pointed out. The, all these three letters, they have two versions in writing. One is called print version, one is called handwritten version. And we talked about that earlier as well. So, in independent shape and the middle shape, there is no difference in both versions. Print and handwritten will be same. No difference at all. But when we come to the medial shape and the final shape, then we have different versions. And especially when we are writing a whole word and using jim or ha or kha as the medial form or the final form. And we are, uh, we, we will be looking in the book also. So what I want you to look at the book so it will be more clear. So, go on page number 47. Safha Rakam Saba Warbain. 47. Saba There is a word you will find to G. The word to G. So, in uh, the word to G, if I break it down, the first is Ta plus G plus Ya plus Ba. To G. Now I will start connecting it. So, what shape I need for ta? Initial. Initial ta. So this is initial ta, right? Then what shape of G I need? Medial. 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 So this is the medial shape. Then the shape of ya again? Medial. Then the shape of ba? Final. 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 So this is the whole word to G. Hmm? This is called print version. Now I am writing the same word in script version, handwritten version. So in the... This is the initial ta of handwritten version and you can see the nukta of is also is a bar horizontal bar as we discussed last time then I will make the medial gene in this shape this is the medial shape of the handwritten version of gene and same will be for ha and for ha so basically this I'm making it more clear here this is the medial shape of gene okay as compared to this one this is the handwritten version. So I am using this shape here and I made Jim. Then everything else will be same, Ya and Ba. So look at these two different styles of writing Jim in the medial position. Right? Is it clear? This one? Both are from same like uh, you draw the line here and you will start ta on the top of the line then you go on the line and everything will be on the center like okay. oh, I'm sorry. Yes. so the top one is the print version so when we write by hand hmm. Are there rules as to which of the two you have to use? No, you are free to free write to down. Okay. You can choose anyone from both versions. But usually when people are writing Arabic, they take this style of gym, not that one. Okay? So, in the Quran, same. The, in the Quran, you will find this also. Those Quran are printed by the uh, you know, composing of the letters, by the typewriter. You will find this gym. Yes. But those Qurans are written by hand, mm. you will find this gym. Yes. Now, we will go to the
to the final gene for both versions, print version and the handwritten version. And there is a word you will find in the book on next page, page number 48, for the same letter, gene, it's beige. Beige is like uh, we have a color, beige color. So how do you write beige in Arabic? So let me erase. Brother Tanvir, again, I'm out of razor. I think I put it in the office. Okay, I can use this space. So, this is print version of beige by Ajim. However, for the handwritten version, beige will be like that. Jim will take this shape. Okay? It's confusing looking confusing. Me, <laughs> For the final Jim? Well, when I was even doing it at home, it was confusing. But I'll get used to it. Mm. So the, the last one, Imam Sahib? This one. Uh, yeah, so is the shape, is it like jean, but you have the hook on it at the top? Yes, you will going up and bringing down, and oh. then you will swing down oh, okay. Okay. to the jean. Okay. Let me write one more time. So this is ba and ya. There is no problem, right? Yeah. Then you will go to the top, then come down, then swing down for G. It became more pointed, though it should not be pointed. It is. Uh, it will come by practice. Like that. Jazakallah khair. Okay. I am going to erase it. Did you already copy all those here? Okay, what is the good practice for writing that you use your DVD and there is a professor, Al Shannavi. No. Have you met him? No. <laughs> Seen him? No. Okay, he will show you how to make these shapes for print version and for the handwritten version both. So practice imitate him several times and then you will get it, inshallah. So this will apply to all the shapes. All the ha, the ha. Exactly, yes. Same shapes will be applied for all three letters, Jim, Ha and Kha. There is no. So if you learn one, then automatically you will get all three. I am writing this paragraph on page number 48 about the final Jim. That is some little bit of confusion. To reach the starting point of a medial or final Jim, a connecting segment is drawn from the line up and then over as the example shows. So, after ya we have, like I am writing again the word beige. So, the connecting segment, we will go <coughs> up and over, like that. And then, you remember the medial gene in handwritten version, that was this shape, right? So, it will be similar to that. This one. So just uh, read this line, pay attention to this line. Final gene, a connecting segment is drawn from the line up and then over as the example shows. So again, as I suggested that always draw a line. And for uh, making this shape, you will go up the line from here and then go down. Like this, this type of shape. In word final position, Jim takes the same tail it has in the independent position. Yes. The common thing between independent and final Jim, this is independent Jim and this is final Jim. Either this shape or that shape is that it has a tail. 
full tail that we are not going uh, we are not using the tail in the independent gym and the medial gym right so the common thing between independent and the final gym or ha or ha to that matter is the tail so the core of the latter if you remember our discussion for last week also in ba ta sa we have the core of the latter right so in these three letters also the core of the latter is this shape this is the core if it is a gym we will put the nukta down if it is ha there will be no nukta at all if it is ha then nukta will be on the top so this is the core letter you are going to see this shape in the uh, in the, you know in independent in initial position in medial position and in the final position okay. and then you can practice of writing these words in your book on page number 47 again there is a word job hmm? okay job is the verb it means he brought like someone brought water for you food for you money for you anything for you that means job hmm? is a man third person if a woman she brought something it will become jabat jabat you will add ta after the word job and you know in few weeks we will go to the practice of you know verbs and all that so you have uh one person how do you say he brought two or more than two three people or more than three if they brought they will be jabu okay if i brought something it will be jibtu if we all brought something it will be jibna so this is the uh, this called conjugation hmm so the words are like somebody i think we say ab in urdu So you, you'll just say jab ab, or is it like? Is it how you're gonna say? Like, okay. Okay. Or, uh, Jaba. I don't want to disturb the. Ah, uh, no. I think your question is, we should say jaba or jab, right? Yeah. Uh. And then, then if I, if somebody brings water, uh huh. So I just say jab, and then. No, no. Then you will say alma. Alma. Ha, uh, alma. Okay, jab alma. Okay. Yes. Because jab means only he brought. He brought. Okay. You are not uh, disclosing the object. Object. Exactly. Right. then you can change the object anything if it is a water the alma if it is a food the taam if it is the he brought the car is sayara then you will go like that. to bring you say jeep yes yes jeep yes if you are asking someone then please bring the water for me right jeep al ma yes jeep al qalam give me the pen or bring the pen oh so we are done with the writing and <coughs> every space that you see in your book for writing lines yeah. so complete uh, those words in your book by writing this is your homework always and i would like to remind you the suggestion of homework that we discuss on first day that is written on your book that <laughs> it is double homework is a double time of the class right <laughs> if it's one hour of the class two hours is the homework <laughs> so it needs a good amount of practice for writing okay. now the second thing about the pronunciation of three letters jim ha and kha uh the good thing is that that the letter jim has equivalent sound in english so it's easy but ha and kha they do not have equivalent sound at all in english especially okay However, the letter Kh has a similar sound in other European languages, and we have some examples for Scottish and for German and for Russian. They have the sound of Kh, similar sound. But Kh at all, it's very very special letter to Arabic. Yes, no equivalent in Arabic. Here. Yes, you and we have some, uh, you know, muscle practice. Your throat muscles practice for Kh. <laughs> Okay, so let's come back again to the first letter Jim. Now the letter Jim, the most Arab part, they pronounce it as the letter J in English, 
and as we say jack okay when we say jack and uh, we pronounce j the same sound of g and most bedouins though those who speak pure arabic yes yeah, so their their accent is like j the all the gulf area of arab they also pronounce at the j in iraq also they pronounce as j but when you go to some eastern part or eastern states of arab like syria and levantine lebanon beirut that part and north africa north africa is the western part of arab world so they pronounce is as j in french word bonjour okay, we write bon with j bonjour but we pronounce jo jo so that will be jo sound another example of that is uh, the way we pronounce a letter s in some english words like pleasure we write pleasure with s spelling but we pronounce it ja pleasure yes or decision if we make any decision we write with s i o n but pronounce ja so this is the same sound of jim in those parts of arab world so this is the second pronunciation third pronunciation is totally different and it is especially for egypt egyptian people they pronounce jim as ga yeah. sound yeah. as the letter g in english in the word game hmm? if you write game or the word goat with g but they pronounce you pronounce with a hard g this is called hard g mm -hmm. so this is the hard g pronunciation for the letter g in egypt mm -hmm. so if someone's name is jamal how do they pronounce gamal 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 wow <laughs> yes Okay. <laughs> What is that? Yeah, yes, okay, so we have. So how do they differentiate then between rain, rain and the gym when they speak? Oh, there is a, both are different sounds, rain and that is ga sound. Ga. Ah, like in the English we say. For me, it's too close. <laughs> yes. Okay. as close to gaf in urdu yes 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 gaf in urdu or in persian also ah. okay so please look at page number 46 and uh brother shuja can you read this paragraph the letter jim has three pronunciations <coughs> this is the second paragraph right. The letter G has three pronunciations that vary according to regions across the Arab world. In Iraq, the Gulf, and in many rural and Bodian dialects, it is pronounced like J in Jack. In most of the Levant region and North America, North Africa, it is pronounced like the French J in Bonjour. A sound often represented in English by a S, as in Clusher. or decision in cairo it is pronounced like the hard g in gay okay is it clear okay. now uh, we have variation of jim so you can pronounce all four words that are written here in all these three different pronunciation so first we will pronounce it with the formal arabic or that is the Uh, standard arabic with the uh, bedouin dialect and gulf and iraq like j as in jack so repeat after me first word taj taj, taj. and taj means crown. 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 crown the second word is jub, jub. 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 Mm. do you have any idea about this word jub mm -hmm. no it's not right. huh? it's not jubba jubba okay no it's not jubba <laughs> Zuban? No, that is Jeeb in Urdu. <laughs> this, uh, I would like to remind you the Surah Yusuf. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has used the word. This word in Surah Yusuf also. Have you remember that word? Yeah, yeah. I remember this line. Yeah, Jubba. Fi ghayabatil Jubba. Yal taqit hu badu sayyara. But Jubba is different. Where is Klaab? Jub is a well of water that is dried. No, no water in it. So Yusuf al-Salam was thrown by his brothers in that well, right? Okay. 
For that, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has used the word jub. Yes. No, no, no. Uh, that is a different word for that. <laughs> so jub is that well of the water. A dried one, yes. Kuwa, ji ji, but without water. Uh, and the third word is tujib. Tujib means you answer. You. This is a verb. You are saying to a man, a second person, you answer from jawab. Like we say jawab, answer, you answer, this tujib. And uh, actually, inshallah, when you will go to the conjugation, you will find that some verbs are common between men and women. So, tujib is for second person man. Also, you can say for a woman as a third person, like she. She answers. Okay? Either you answer or she answers. It depends on the context. So, you can write both meanings. And the fourth word is the jaj. Chicken. Chicken. <laughs> this is a very famous word, huh? Yes. For and if you go to any Arabic restaurant, Middle Eastern restaurant, you will find the jaj. Laham the jaj. Chicken. So this was the pronunciation, the standard one, J. Now pronounce again all these four words in uh, Levant region and North African. With keeping in mind ja sound, right? So we'll say taj, taj, jup, jup, tajib, tajib, tajaj, tajaj. Now go to the Misr. <laughs> Be Egyptian. Tag. Gub. Yes. To give. And the gag. The gag. Okay. Now, learn to recognize all these three pronunciations of Jim and choose one to use when speaking. It's a good idea to choose at least one voice model to imitate for speaking in general, whether a teacher, friend, or acquaintance, or some of the characters in the colloquial scenes. Choose the pronunciation of Jim that your voice model uses. My advice is that right now use only the standard one, J as in Jack. <laughs> And it will also, uh, you will not be confusing, especially when you are reading the Quran. Because for reading the Quran and the Ahadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we need this sound of Jim. Okay. Writing of Jim, we already done with this part, right? So, we will move to the letter Ha now. And it's on page number 48. Sister Sadia, you would like to read this paragraph about Ha? Sure. Yes. It's the last paragraph on page number 48. Yes, please. The letter Ha represents a sound that is pronounced deep in the throat. It has no equivalent in English. First, take a few minutes to become better acquainted with some of the throat muscles that you use often, but not to speak English. The following exercise is designed to make you aware of what these <coughs> muscles can already do so that you can use them to speak Arabic. Practice this exercise as often as you can over the next two weeks or so until you can do it easily. And your pronunciation of ha has developed. Okay. Wow, two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. <laughs> but again, alhamdulillah that we are, because of the blessing of the Quran, we are able to pronounce it, right? Okay. But there are some uh, good, you know, tips for this exercise. What are the good, you know, techniques? So, please continue reading of it. Pronouncing ha with your mouth open, make a raspy, breathy sound like an exaggerated H, or mm -hmm. like you're breathing on glass in order to make it fog up. <laughs> Put your hand on your throat as you do this, and notice that your throat muscles are not moving at all. Okay, now, hold on. If you are just saying <laughs> make only that sign, like you are fogging up. <laughs> but still, you are not pronouncing ha well. Huh. Okay, uh, still your muscles are not uh, moving the way they should be. Okay, so what is the next step? To pronounce ha, you need to activate those muscles. 
Yes, yes, yes. No, okay. You need to activate those muscles by tightening them on the inside so that you are constricting the air passage and blocking off air from the inside. Okay. So this is the key that you need to block off the air from inside. And you need to put your hand also on your throat. Yes. Yes. So feel that these muscles are moving. Bring them to motion. Yes. Yes, continue. You should be able to feel the Adam's apple move. Mm. move make more raspberry H sounds. Constrict the muscles so that the air can just barely squeeze through your throat. When you do this successfully, it will produce ha. Mm. Keep practicing contracting and relaxing the muscles using your hand to guide you. Most important, repeat this exercise as often as you can, pronouncing ha takes practice and concentration at first. The more you practice now, the sooner you will be able to say it easily. It is important to pronounce this sound correctly to distinguish it from the English H, which is a different letter in Arabic, because this difference affects meaning. Yes, this is a very important in the point that we have to differentiate between the two sounds. English H sound is produces, produces another letter in Arabic, that is this HA. Okay? So we have to make the difference between this ha and this letter ha. That is more, uh, you know, raspy, breathy, and a throat letter. Throat letter. Today I also would like to uh, tell you about a very important thing regarding the Arabic pronunciations.